Too many here. Welcome to the garage. Today I'd like to talk about the XR600 countershaft splines. They wear out. Since I heard about this spline wear, it's been a concern of mine. But as I look back at my oldest bike I bought in 92, it doesn't have any spline wear. And I've seen bikes with tremendous spline wear. So over the years, I've been wondering about this, thinking about it, contemplating and theorizing. And I've heard a few things over time. Biggest thing is the XR600 and the 650L for that matter doesn't have a cush hub in the rear hub. Because of that, you've got a direct drive through your motor and transmission chain directly to the sprocket and the tire to the ground. There's no real give. It's metal to metal all the way. Now on an XR600, I've heard that that's okay not to have a cush drive because an off-road vehicle isn't even on the asphalt. You see, the whole thing is when you're putting a whole lot of stress on this going back and forth, it's something's gotta give. Something's gotta give. And if you've got a hardened sprocket, if you've got a hardened sprocket, chances are it's harder than the countershaft splines. So don't go getting a really hard sprocket. There's some that say they're hardened. I'd rather have the sprocket wear than the countershaft. The whole motor cases have to come apart to replace that. It's expensive and they don't make splines anymore. Honda's not offering. They're sold out. You can't get one anywhere in the world. So it's very important not to wear out your splines because now everything's ruined. Your whole bike's ruined. This motor happens to be a 2000 XR600R. But this is the countershaft sprocket and the special setup that was on here when I got it and the splines are still in good shape. I've seen them where they just wear out and there's not much left of them, if anything, and that's where you gotta weld them up to get the last little bit out of it. I wanted to talk about countershaft splines and my theories about what's going on here and let you know some of the things I've heard and show you a trick that somebody did on this motor, a 2000 XR600R, with a 12 tooth front sprocket, 12 teeth. Now 12 teeth is too small to have the standard retainer clip with two bolts go on here. So they're using a horseshoe clip, a snap ring, to hold this in place. Let's see if we can take a look here. Okay, so we've got the 12 tooth sprocket that came on this motor. This is like a copy of an OEM sprocket. If not OEM, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's OEM or not. There's no identifying factors. I wouldn't doubt that it is an OEM sprocket. But underneath the sprocket on the back side, there's a washer merely to give this space. And there's a regular retaining clip that somebody has cut off the dog ears on this here so that it wouldn't interfere with the chain. Now what that gives you is a, in the end, is a sprocket that doesn't have so much play on it. The modified retaining clip, a washer, the sprocket, and once again, there's no bolt holes for this, and there's not enough room for this. Somebody has figured this out, I don't know who, previous owner, figured it out to where it holds this on here as best as possible, without having a whole lot of play back and forth. Your sprocket's aligned the way it's supposed to be and there's less play. If you go to the OEM sprocket, the shoulder side goes outward and you install that on with a retainer clip that bolts into place. Now with the OEM setup, You've got the same amount of play this direction as that last sprocket had. This used 13 tooth sprocket shows the same amount of play that was on the 12 tooth that came on here. These bolts draw it up to the retainer. 
That keeps it aligned with where it's supposed to be on the end of the shaft. But it also affords a bit of play. And once again, I don't think this is even a problem if you're out on dirt and you flog the motor, the tire's gonna scratch out. That's where the give is. You see, when you're on the street, you've got so much traction that it doesn't give. And something's gotta give. And what they've done on this is they've given you a wider sprocket, 3 sixteenths of an inch wider than OEM. So what that means for you and me is when this fits on and is drawn up by the nuts and bolts, it just plain covers more ground on the spines, getting a better grip. It doesn't change the fact that there's still side to side play on the splines. It's reversible. You can put it on either way and you keep your alignment and you could can... Over here I've got some used parts and new parts. They all tell a story. What we've got here is a selection of sprockets. There's a 12 tooth sprocket, which may indeed be OEM, slightly worn on the drive side. And I've always been curious where I would go with a 12 tooth sprocket. Gonna have to be doing some hill climbs for that. Got a whole variety of 13 tooth here. Here's a 13 tooth. I can't identify it, but it's different than my others because it's got four holes. Four bolt holes. I assume for more than one application, but I don't know. It's got the shoulder on one side and flat on the other. So it goes on that way. Here we've got another 13 tooth sprocket. This one looks to be OEM. It's got a 564 stamped on it. 13 tooth and indeed it has room to put the OEM clip on. The OEM retainer. Here we've got a brand new sprocket by Sunstar. This may be one of those hardened sprockets. It's stamped with Sunstar and a 356. That last one, the OEM, had a beveled edge interior on one side. This Sunstar has a beveled edge on both sides. That means you've got even less contact That's about eight millimeters of contact surface. Where the teeth come right down to the spine. As opposed to this OEM, that looks like about eight as well. Maybe I'm not reading this right. That's only about six millimeters of contact area right down at the bone where it counts. And then we've got a Fritzko sprocket. If you take a look at this, 13-2 sprocket. It looks like it has a full 10 millimeters of contact right down to the bottom and out to the outside. There is no beveled Schaefer there is no beveled edge on either side. Once again, these are reversible and they're aligned. The reason I say aligned is because some people will put on the XR650R sprocket. And I have never done it, but if you put that sprocket on, your chain won't be aligned. And when your chain's not aligned, you wear opposite of where you used to wear with your last sprocket. So you widen out and chew up your chain sliders. Chain should run right down the middle of your slider and wear in nicely there and almost last the lifetime of the bike. I've got a 92 OHV, I've never replaced it on there. 
but you start running a sprocket out of line like if you were to put one of these sprockets uh, one of these sprockets on backwards you'd immediately start to wear this in a funny way and end up with a misaligned area so then you've got your 14 tooth Frisco sprocket this is a used one And it looks like I used it in one direction and never did turn it around. I'm a fan of the OEM clip as opposed to the Sir clip. And you've got your 15 tooth sprocket as well available out there. This one's stamped 356 by Sunstar. Same as that 13 we had. Beveled edges front and bottom. Minimal contact area on the splines here, down in the bone. Now with this, you can get out on the highway and put some miles on. But you'll have to rig up a new kind of case saver. So the OEM retainer bolts are hardened. And if you're going to go out and get some replacements, make sure you're getting hardened ones. So I don't know what you're going to do to prevent your bike from getting spine wear. But in my mind, dumping the clutch and popping wheelies, gassing it all the time, that's just gonna add to the short life. Someday, I'll bet you there'll be, someday there's gonna be somebody who repops the main shaft and makes it available again. But you can't get them right now from Honda. Now you can't get one. So it's especially important not to have a bunch of wear. You're best off to take good care of it. If you make all this rigid and you don't have a cush drive, something's gotta give. I read a story about this guy who met a Honda engineer. There's something about the amount of heat treating that they do to this. And there's qual different grades of heat treating. Well, apparently the decision was made at Honda to put a lesser treated, lesser lasting countershaft in the XR600R for United States and that's because those XR 600 R's were dirt bikes only. So they have a, a lesser heat treated shaft and are more vulnerable to this problem. In this day and age, you know, with everybody getting a plate for their XR 600 R, you're gonna run into this trouble unless you take care of it. It's just something to watch out for and I wanted to talk to you about it.